Okay, welcome back. In the last video, we were talking about what force components are. And as a quick recap, if you had some force vector, in this case, I just called it F, you could see that we, F is made up of the summation of this F of X vector and this F of Y vector. So that's what I've written here. F is equal to F of X plus F of Y. And we said that these components, these terms F of X and F of Y, these are the components of this force vector f. And towards the end of the video, we found we started to discuss uh, these things called unit vectors. And we could use unit vectors to specify the direction of these particular components, in this case, f of x and f of y. And in this video, I want to dive a little bit deeper into unit vectors and explain why they are so important. So in the previous example, we had f equals f of x and f of y. Now, because I put this little subscript here, x and y, you can tell that this component f of x is acting along the x direction. And this component f of y is acting along the y axis. Now that's great, but what if we didn't actually have these variables and instead we actually had these numbers? So let's scroll down here and say that instead of f being represented by these variables called f of x and f of y, what if we said that f is equal to 100 newtons uh, plus 250 newtons? Now this is a problem because in this term right here, we know nothing about the direction of this force vector. And this 250 newtons, again, we know the magnitude, but we know nothing about the direction. So this is dangerous. We cannot represent this force vector F as simply 100 newtons plus 250 newtons. So instead, maybe what I could do is I could say that F is equal to a 100 newtons in the X direction plus 250 newtons in the y direction. Now, this is a little bit better, right? Because now we're specifying the magnitude and the direction of this component right here, and the same thing for y, but this is this is kind of too long, right? We don't always wanna say in the x direction or in the y direction. So what did we do in the last video? Well, we took that x component, which was f of x, and we said we could take its magnitude and we could simply multiply it by this unit vector i to specify that this magnitude of f of x was acting in the horizontal direction. So we can take that same concept here and say that f is equal to a hundred newtons in the i direction or the x direction, I should say, plus 250 newtons in the vertical direction, which is represented by the unit vector j. And so when you look at this uh, equation right here, you can tell that this force vector F, whatever it may be, it has a X component of 100 newtons acting in, of course, the X direction, and it also has a Y component of 250 newtons. So that's really why unit vectors are so powerful. It gives us a way to indicate the direction of these force components. Okay, so let's get a little bit more in depth here. So let's say that you had a force vector called R, and R was equal to this A vector plus B vector. Now, these A and B vectors, they could just be arbitrary force vectors. So let's say A was some vector that was, you know, acting like this. This was vector A, and then you had some force vector uh, B that was a little bit shorter, a little bit smaller, but it was acting a lot more steeper. So you have this force vector A plus force vector of B gives us this force vector R. Now in previous videos, what we would do is we would use trigonometry and a graphical approach to figure out what this resultant vector R was if we added A plus B. And so in previous videos, what we did was we took one vector and then we took the second vector and we added it to the tip of that vector and the resultant vector would be this vector right here. This was our resultant vector. And then we went on to use the law of sines and the law of cosines and some trigonometry to figure out what R is. But I think there's a better way to represent these different vectors, in this case, A and B. So let's draw a coordinate system right here. So I, if I said that this was the Y direction and this was the X direction right here, I could, what I could do 
is I could take this a vector and I could plug it right there. And then I could take this b vector and I could add it to the tip of a. And if we added those two vectors together, guess what? We get this resultant vector right here. And this would be our resultant vector. So now if you look at each of these vectors at a and b, well, for a, you can sort of see that a has a component uh, that's acting along the x direction right there. And it also has a y component, which is acting vertically right there. And so these two vectors, we could say are a in the x direction and a in the y direction. And the same thing goes for this vector b. So if I said that, well, b has a small, very small uh, x component, uh, but it has a steep, uh, bigger y component, you could see that if we took all of the components acting in the x direction, so a of x right here plus this b of x right here, we would get the x component of this resultant force, right? a of x plus b of x gives us this resultant, uh, which we could just call r of x for simplicity. And the same thing goes for the y direction. If we took a of y right here and we added b of y, we would get the y component of the resultant force, which we could call r of y. And so what we could do is we could represent each of these force vectors a and b in their particular components. So I could say that force vector A is really comprised of this A of X vector plus A of Y vector. And the same thing for B. B is equal to B of X plus B of Y. And just like in the last video, we could break these components down so they explicitly tell us what the direction of these components are. So for vector A, I could rewrite this as the magnitude of a of x times the i direction, or the i unit vector, plus the magnitude of y times the j unit vector. And the same thing goes for b. I could say that this is b of x, or the magnitude of b of x times the unit vector i, plus the magnitude of b of y times the unit vector j. And so now, all of a sudden, these terms tell us the direction of these vectors right here that make up A. In the same way that B of X and B of Y, these terms tell us how B is made. And so the reason this is important is because for the resultant vector R, we can figure out what the components of R are. <laughs> so I could say that R of X, the vector R of X, is really equal to the vector A of X plus the vector b of x. And I can rewrite this as, well, the magnitude of a of x times the unit vector i plus the magnitude of b of x times the unit vector i. And you can see that these are like terms, right? Because they both have this unit vector i. And so what this would turn out to be uh, would be the a of x uh, magnitude, which is just a scalar, it's just a number, plus b of x times the unit vector i. And the same thing goes for r of y. The r component, the y component of r is equal to the a of y vector plus the b of y vector. And that's simply equal to the magnitude of a of y times the unit vector j plus the magnitude of b of y times the unit vector j. And again, these are like terms, right? This, this is j and this is j. And so what we can do is we can say that the magnitude a of y plus the magnitude b of y times the unit vector j gives us r of y, this vector right here. So to write this in more general terms, uh, up here in the top left, I could say that r, well, r is really just a summation of this vector a plus vector b. And if I wanted to expand this out, well, we know that vector a is made up of a of x and a of y. So I could say that a of x plus a of y gives us this a vector right here. And we can do the same thing for b, right? b is comprised of, well, the vector b of x plus the vector b of y. 
Now, each of these four components or these four terms, uh, we can represent using unit vectors. So I could say for a of x, I could take the magnitude of a of x, which is just a of x, times the unit vector i, plus the magnitude of a of y times the unit vector j, plus the magnitude of b of x times the unit vector i, plus the magnitude of b of y times the unit vector j. And again, we have like terms here, right? Here's this i and i, and then we also have this j and j. And so to sort of simplify this, I could say a of x times unit vector i plus b of x times unit vector i plus a of y times unit vector j plus b of y times unit vector j. And again, we could simplify this even further and say that, well, now we can just take the magnitudes ax plus bx and multiply it by the unit vector i, and then the magnitudes ay plus by uh, times the unit vector j. And this is exactly what we found out here, right? r of x is equal to this a of x plus b of x in the i direction, just like it was here. And then this r of y vector is this a of y plus b of y, uh, the magnitudes, times j, just like it was here. So in summary, unit vectors really, they allow us to represent force vectors in terms of their components to make things like vector addition a lot easier. And they really allow us to represent these force components in terms of their magnitudes and directions.